war, torture, betrayal, death. Tune in for all of this and more as we explore Puccini's tragic classic, Tosca, with your hosts, the Opera Avengers. <laughs> For joining us on Opera Avengers, I'm Alejandra Martinez, your guide to demystifying opera, an art form that was created by the people, for the people, and of the people. For our second episode, we will explore Tosca, a grim, complex opera where good people get entrapped by impossible decisions and intense negotiations, all against a backdrop of political turmoil. Now, a quick word about spoilers. We believe that, unlike most other media, going into an opera already knowing the story actually enhances your enjoyment. In opera, there are so many dimensions to keep track of, like how the orchestra's playing, nuances of the singer's performances, the aesthetic of each individual language, costumes, set designs, heck, the entire concept behind the production, especially if it's an artsy-fartsy one, can be something you need to grasp. Knowing the story beforehand gives you a chance to take it all in without having to worry about missing a subtitle or two. So think of our Opera Avengers podcasts as your Cliff's Notes and be free to enjoy every minute of high-flying opera. Tosca was introduced in 1887 as the non-musical play La Tosca, written by French playwright Victorien Sardou. In his lifetime, Sardou had written more than 70 plays, most obscure today. But La Tosca, his third production, remains his most successful. Composer Giacomo Puccini fell in love with the simplistic storytelling and underemphasized spectacle of La Tosca and begged to adapt it into an opera. Sardou, however, was skeptical of surrendering the rights to his most successful play to a relatively new composer, an Italian no less. But after a long struggle, Puccini won the rights to adaptation. Tosca takes place during June of 1800, one of the final years of the French Revolutionary Wars. The French forces, led by Napoleon Bonaparte, are duking it out with Austria and Prussia. It is a period of high political tension. Tosca begins in Rome, Italy, when... We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this breaking story. We have received news of a riot at Rome's military prison, Castel Sant'Angelo. After a long standoff with the guards, the prisoners have been brought back under control, but we can confirm the escape of at least one inmate. Cesar Angelotti, former consul of the Roman Republic, now a political prisoner due to the events of the war, he was last seen on the streets, possibly seeking to contact fellow conspirators or even flee the city. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of this dangerous felon, contact Chief of Police Baron Scarpia. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming, already in progress. Sorry about that, guys. Coincidentally, Act 1 begins by introducing fugitive Cesare Angelotti, hungry and weak clinging to shadows to avoid the brutal police force scouring the streets. Fortunately, Angelotti's sister, the Marchesa Attavanti, has provided him with directions to safe haven, the Church of Sant'Andra della Valle. Here, he finds the painter, Mario Cavaradossi. Cavaradossi is a Republican sympathizer and an old friend of Angelotti's. The two pals discuss whether Angelotti should remain in hiding or flee Rome altogether. But the reunion is cut short with the arrival of our titular character, Floria Tosca. Floria Tosca, that strong-willed, devious diva we all know and love. Come on down to the plaza this summer to enjoy a live concert. Watch and listen as this angelic beauty performs all the classic songs from the 1700s and today. 
tickets are $49.99, but we will also accept certain forms of livestock. So come on down for an evening of beautiful opera. Experience the beauty of Floria Tosca live while you still can. I thought we were going to commercial for another... Sorry about that, folks. When we last left off, Angelotti had gone into hiding following the arrival of Tosca, celebrated singer and current lover of Cavaradossi. She's fiery, quick-tempered, and extremely jealous. In fact, she thinks Cavaradossi has been speaking not to an escaped convict, but even worse, another woman. Tosca has long had her suspicions of Cavaradossi, especially with regard to his latest painting, which just happens to be an innocent candid of Angelotti's sister, who visits the church quite often. Cavaradossi reassures Tosca of his fidelity, calming her temper. Tosca asks to share a romantic night at their villa, but Cavaradossi refuses. He still has work to do. Tosca assumes this involves another woman, so she storms off. Once she's gone, Angelotti comes out of hiding. He and Cavaradossi concoct a plan where Angelotti will escape Rome while disguised in his sister's clothing. A masterful plan if ever there was one. Cavaradossi will be free to help later, but in the meantime, he sends Angelotti to hide in the well at Cavaradossi's villa. But they are interrupted again, this time by cannon fire. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know we had that kind of budget. Yes, cannon fire, signaling Angelotti's escape. The police are closing in. Angelotti is forced to flee for the villa, but first he stores his sister's clothes under the altar for later. Breaking news out of Italy. Napoleon Bonaparte, valiant leader of the French forces, has suffered a crushing failure near the village of Spinetta Marengo. Even now, the French forces are regrouping while Bonaparte plans a second assault. Our political experts agree Madringo will serve as the stage for a battle that will decide the fate of the war. More on this story as it develops. Boy, lots of breaking news today. Well, we are now back on the air. When we last left off, Angelotti's escape was discovered. He and Cavaradossi have fled the church, which is now occupied by Baron Scarpia, the corrupt chief of police, surrounded by his uniformed henchmen. Scarpia learns that Cavaradossi was in the church and assumes that he is helping Angelotti. Just then, Tosca returns to the church and happens upon the policeman. Scarpia is aware of her relationship to Cavaradossi, as well as her legendary jealousy and plays a devious hand. Scarpia reveals the feminine clothes hidden under the altar and suggests that Cavaradossi is cheating on Tosca with Angelotti's sister, who Tosca has been suspicious of all along. Tosca believes the lie and runs off to find Cavaradossi and confront him. Scarpia discreetly orders his men to follow Tosca, believing she will lead them right to Angelotti. Once alone, Scarpia reveals that he has become obsessed with Tosca and intends to execute Cavaradossi so that she can be his. This brings us to Act Two. Scarpia's men have been unable to find Angelotti, but they have captured Cavaradossi. Tosca arrives at Scarpia's apartment per his invitation, where she immediately finds Cavaradossi being dragged to a torture chamber. Cavaradossi refuses to snitch on Angelotti, and he orders Tosca to do the same. Cavaradossi is dragged off, leaving Scarpia and Tosca alone. Scarpia bargains with Tosca, promising to spare Cavaradossi pain if she reveals Angelotti's hiding place. Tosca holds firm, resisting only until she hears Cavaradossi's screams of pain. She blurts out that Angelotti is hiding at the villa. Scarpia orders the torture to end. 
Cavaradossi is brought back in, but he is furious with Tosca for betraying his friend's position. It is then that citizens announce... We interrupt this program to bring you an important announcement. Napoleon Bonaparte's troops have stolen victory from the jaws of defeat at the Battle of Marengo. French citizens are in the streets, dancing and celebrating this moment of national pride. This decisive victory over the Austrians guarantees the success of the Italian campaign returning northern Italy to the French. What a whopping victory. We now return you to your normal programming. Are they just going to keep doing that? (sighs) Sorry, sorry, again, for the interruption. The French victory at Marengo is a huge deal, especially for Republican sympathizers like Cavaradossi, who gloats that this important battle will effectively remove Scarpia from his position. Scarpia responds by having Cavaradossi dragged away to his execution. Tosca begs for Scarpia to spare her lover's life, and the cruel police chief is more than happy to negotiate. If Tosca sleeps with him. He gives his word, which isn't much, that Cavaradossi will live. Tosca is disgusted by his demand and threatens to jump from the window. Then, Tosca hears the drums of the executioner. Cavaradossi has only one hour to live. Tosca despairs, still standing by the window, and prays to God for help. It takes Tosca a while to make her choice, so perhaps now is a good time for a commercial. Are you having difficulty preparing dinner? Is your current silverware just not cutting it? Are you in need of something to defend your honor against a power-crazy megalomaniac? Then listen sharp. The all-new Perfecto Knife is the answer to your prayers. Our advanced, cutting-edge technology allows you to slice through anything as if it were butter. Carrots? No problem. Human flesh? Easy as pie. For only four payments of $19.99 US dollars or $18.35 Euros or $35,543 Lira or five Scooty, the Perfecto Knife can be yours. But wait! Call within the next five minutes and we'll throw in another Perfecto Knife free! Not only that, we'll also add a specialized whetstone for sharpening. Orders are limited, so act now! Welcome back. Tosca and Scarpia's intense negotiations have just been interrupted by the arrival of a police officer. He brings news that Angelotti has been found, but he killed himself before he could be taken. It is now that Tosca gives in to Scarpia's terms. Scarpia promises to spare Cavaradossi's life by staging a mock execution in front of a firing squad armed with blanks. Tosca agrees, but on one final condition that Scarpia provides her and Cavaradossi a document guaranteeing safe passage out of Rome. Scarpia agrees, eagerly whips up a safe conduct, then prepares to claim Tosca as his. Then, Tosca steals a knife from the table and fatally stabs Scarpia, proclaiming this is Tosca's kiss. Scarpia dies in a pool of his own blood. Tosca feels regret, and forgives Scarpia's corpse by lighting candles and piously laying a crucifix on his chest. She then takes the safe conduct and flees the apartment. This brings us to Act 3. We are now in Castel Sant'Angelo, the same prison Angelotti escaped, and the same prison where Cavaradossi now is being led to his execution. Cavaradossi refuses to speak to a priest, but he wishes to write a final letter to Tosca. He writes a beautiful goodbye then becomes overwhelmed by memories of his time with his beloved. Just then, Tosca arrives with good news. She has the safe conduct, and the execution is a fake. She tells Cavaradossi that all he must do is pretend to fall dead as the firing squad shoots him with blank bullets. Then, they can finally leave Rome and have a life together. But they must hurry before Scarpia's body is discovered. The time has come for the execution. The soldiers line up and prepare to fire. Cavaradossi faces them without fear, and once the bullets are released, 
He falls to the ground with disturbing realism. From afar, Tosca praises her lover's acting ability, claiming his death to be incredibly convincing. But after the guards leave, Tosca approaches to awaken Cavaradossi, and he doesn't move. The bullets were real. The execution was real. He's dead. Scarpia has betrayed Tosca, having no intention of making good on his promise, no matter what she chose. To make matters worse, Scarpia's henchmen discover his corpse and sound the alarm. The safe conduct will do her no good here. Policemen hunt Tosca down, cornering her at a parapet. With no other option, Tosca takes fate into her own hands and leaps over the edge, choosing to kill herself rather than be a prisoner ever again. We bring you this tragic update. Famed singer Floria Tosca is dead. Branded a murderer and on the run from the police, she has flung herself to her death rather than face charges. This is a tragic and unexpected end to one of Italy's finest performers. She will be mourned by an entire nation. Back to your regular programming. Thus ends the tragic story and life of Tosca. We have with us here one of the survivors of the ordeal, Spoletta, a member of the police force under Baron Scarpia. Welcome to the studio, Spoletta. Yeah, first off, I have to say, I don't appreciate how you keep referring to us as henchmen. A figure of speech, of course. Would you mind sharing your take on this incident? The Roman police force has been criticized in the past for its corrupt methods and questionable tactics. Well, my official report says it like it is. We arrested Signor Cavaradosi for aiding and abetting a known fugitive, in addition to obstruction of justice. When exactly did he obstruct justice? When we were torturing him and he wouldn't tell us stuff. Oh. I didn't know torture was legal. Or ethical, for that matter. Who's telling the story here? The guy didn't have to be tortured. He didn't have to help a fugitive. He could have just kicked the guy out and been okay. He could have just spent the night at his villa with Tosca, and none of this would have ever happened. Well, that's an interesting perspective. Yeah, but I should probably get going. My lunch is almost over. Ever since the French took control, the force is a lot more strict, if you know what I mean. How is it working under new management? It's a lot less fun. I kind of miss the old days. Bending the rules, skimming off the top, intimidating lowlifes. You know how it is. I'm pretty sure I don't. Ah, well. Ciao! And so Puccini's masterpiece, Tosca, ends. And despite a body count that includes more than half the cast, our lovers Cavaradossi and Tosca are reunited in death as warring nations take the final steps towards peace. I'm Alejandra Martinez, and thank you for listening. If you want to see Tosca firsthand, check out Cleveland Opera Theater's production, May 8th at 7.30 and 10th at 3 p.m. Opera Avengers is a production of the Great Lakes Light Opera, an organization based out of Cleveland, Ohio, dedicated to bringing opera and all local art music to everyone. Want to learn more? Visit us at greatlakeslightopera.com. Want to help out? Check our donation page or email us at greatlakeslightopera1 at gmail.com. Oh, and let us know what you'd like to hear next. 